Hello everyone and today we are going to cover what is inter VLAN routing, why you need it, in what cases you need to use that and if you need it, what are the different ways to use the inter VLAN routing. We will discuss three different scenarios. One is ROAS, router on a stick, which is one of the popular one. We will also look into SVIs, which will be layer 3 SVI and we will also look into routed interfaces. These will be the three modes we will review today that how you can utilize it to achieve the inter VLAN routing. And at the end, we will have the labs where we will just quickly configure it and see if it is really working. Those who don't know me, my name is Vakas and I will be covering CCNA, NP and IE. Please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified for the upcoming videos. Let's get started. The first thing we are going to discuss is why you need inter VLAN routing. For example, you have two different VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. In VLAN 10, you have John and Andy. And in VLAN 20, we have Jeff and Steve. They are in two different subnet IDs from where you cannot communicate. If you will try to ping from 192.168.1.1 or 1.2, we have two pieces. Pinging it to the other side, you will not be able to ping it. But inside the VLAN 10 or inside the VLAN 20, you will be able to communicate. This is where inter VLAN routing comes in. Inter VLAN routing gets achieved by three different scenarios. We will do the labs one by one. The first scenario we are going to discuss is router on a stick. In this scenario, what happens is all the PCs will be access ports and in different VLANs. But the router interface, let's say it has one interface, we will be converting it to trunk interface and configure the virtual interfaces on the router, assign it the IP addresses one from each VLAN and then we will utilize the router as our default gateway to route these packets from VLAN 10 to VLAN 20. How the router is going to handle on the single interface is once it's trunk, all the packets will be reaching to the router. When the router will send the reply, each frame will be containing the packet with the VLAN header in that one and the switch will be able to identify where this frame is going to be. That's how the router does this whole inter VLAN routing. We will configure it in the lab. Just hold down a second. The next scenario is where we have layer 3 router. We can utilize it as our router or layer 3 device. This layer 3 device will be configured with the SVIs virtual interfaces where we will configure one IP address from each VLAN and our layer 3 switch will do this routing part. The last mode is routed interfaces. In routed interfaces mode, what happens is we have two different interfaces. In this one, we don't have any trunk interfaces. We have all the interfaces as access ports. And the router will have two different IP addresses, one from VLAN 10 and one from VLAN 20. That is where it will be able to route the packet received from one interface and send it to the other side, which will be between VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and it will be able to communicate. That is the third way of communication. These are the three different ways you can utilize inter VLAN routing. Let's quickly do the labs and see how it works. Let's go towards our labs. The first lab we have is for router on a stick. In this one, I have connected four different PCs and I already configured the IP addresses. Let's quickly configure the VLANs on the layer two switch and we will convert these interfaces to access ports we will convert the router to the trunk port. If you are not aware with the VLANs and you are not aware with what is trunk and access ports are, just check the lecture, the link is above. So let's quickly go to the switch, go to configure terminal and we will configure two different VLANs, VLAN 10, let's name it data VLAN 1 and let's name VLAN 20, name it data 2. So we will configure all the interfaces as access ports except the router interface. The last interface is router interface, show IP interface brief. We have four interfaces up. The fifth interface is down. We didn't configure the router yet. So let's configure these first four interfaces into access ports. One and two will be in VLAN 10 and three, four port number will be in VLAN 20. Let's configure it quickly. Let's quickly configure first two interfaces in VLAN 10, interface range, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 and 2, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. Alright, 
and let's give the description VLAN 10. Let's configure the other two interfaces quickly fast Ethernet 0 slash 3 and 4, switchboard mode access, switchboard access VLAN 20. Let's do the end show VLAN. We have our interfaces configured and it should be perfectly fine. Just to verify, we are not able to ping in both of the networks. Let's quickly do that. If you go to any of the PC from VLAN 10, let's ping it. All right, let's ping it. 192.168.1.2, which is the second IP address, we received the reply. But if we try to ping VLAN 20, 172.16.1.1, we don't have any response back. Now it's time to configure the router. And we will configure this interface as trunk, which is 0 slash 5. Let's go to the interface. Let's go to the switch back and let's configure it. Let's quickly configure interface faster than 0 slash 5, switchboard mode, trunk, switchboard, trunk, allowed VLANs 10 and 20. It's always good practice when you are configuring the router interfaces to mention which VLANs you want it to send the traffic. Right, we are in the router. Let's check. What are the IP addresses we have? We don't have any IP address and we have Gigathernet 0 slash 0, which we are trusted in, which is currently in administrative down. Interface Gigathernet 0 slash 0 slash 0, and we let's no shut it down so the interfaces comes up. Now, here we will be configuring two different interfaces, which will be a virtual interface. So let's configure the interface gigathernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 10. This is what we are going to assign it to VLAN 10. And encapsulation dot 1q, here we will be assigning it the VLAN ID. So let's assign the VLAN ID. We have assigned it. Now assign it the IP address 192.168.1.254.255.255.0. We are good to go. We can ping VLAN 10. Let's configure another interface for VLAN 20. Interface Gigathernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 20. Encapsulation dot 1q. We will be assigning it the VLAN. IP address 172.16.1.254.255.255.255.0. If you are not aware where the subnet mask, the link is up. You can see how to calculate these things. All right, let's ping this VLAN as well. What is this do command does is you can run the commands which are of user mode in the privilege mode it will automatically adjust the where it needs to run 172.16.1.1 this is pc1 in the and it's pinging we are pinging both of the interfaces perfectly fine now let's go to any of the vlan which we was not able to ping it earlier let's go to its cli if you notice, we was not able to ping 172.16.1.1 earlier. Now, if you try to ping it, we have the reply. The only thing you need to set is the default gateways. I already set it. This is how we configure first scenario. Let's look into the example number two, where we have used SVIs to do this inter VLAN routing. I have connected layer three switch, which is 3650, and I connected all four pieces with that one. I already configured the VLANs and their IP addresses for the PCs. Let's configure this switch with two interfaces, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. This VLAN 10 will have the IP address from this side, left side, and VLAN 20 will have from the right side, 172.16.1.254. Let's quickly go into the switch. Okay, we have our switch if you notice i already configured the vlans and interfaces let's quickly go into the configure terminal interface vlan 10 ip address we are going to assign it from vlan 10 192.168.1.254.255.255.255.0 interface vlan 20 ip address 172.16.1.255.255.255.0. Now, if you do show IP interface brief, we should have two interfaces with two IP addresses, which are virtual interfaces. If you try to ping 192.168.1.1, you are able to ping it. Let's ping the other zone 172.16.1.2. Now, if you try to ping from John to Jeff, which is 
in different VLANs, it should be pinging perfectly fine. Let's try that. Let's ping 172.16.1.1. This one we are not able to ping. Let's check what is the issue. And why is that is let's go to switch. Now let's verify from the switch side as well. Show IP route and we have the routing table empty, which seems like the default command is disabled for the routing table on this switch. How we enable that? IP routing. And we should be having two routes in the routing table. Yes, absolutely. Let's try now from PC John. Let's try to ping it again. And we should be able to do that. This is how we do in the second scenario. Remember, if you are not able to route between the devices, by default, IP routing is disabled on some of the switches. Always check show IP route and you should be fine. Let's go towards our third scenario. In this scenario as well, I have already configured PCs and VLANs. Now we will be configuring the router as our routed interfaces, one in VLAN 10 and other one in VLAN 20. Currently it is in down status. Let's configure the switch to make these interfaces as access ports. Let's quickly do that. Our interfaces are configured five and six as the interfaces. Let's interface fast ethernet, zero slash, five switch port mode access switch port access vlan let's put it in vlan 10 all right and interface fast ethernet 0 slash 6 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 20. if you notice show vlan we have all the interfaces properly configured let's go to the router and try to configure that going back to the router cli Okay, and let's go to the configure terminal. Do show IP interface brief. We have all the interfaces down. Let's configure it. Interface giga ethernet 0 slash 0. Let's configure the IP address 192.168.1.254.255.255.255. 255 this one we want it in VLAN town. Interface giga ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1. And IP address 172.16.1. 254.255.255.0. No shutdown, and we should have our all the interfaces up. To IP route, and if you remember in the switches, we have to do that IP routing sometime, but in router by default, it, the, this is on. Let's try to ping it 192.168.1.1, and we have the reply. Let's try to ping 172.16.1.1. All right, from here we are not getting the reply. Let's see why is that. Oh, we have it. Okay, so it's just resolving the app. Sometimes it's okay. So it's working fine. Let's go back to the PC and ping 172.16.1.1 and we have the reply. This is how we configure the inter VLAN routing. Hope you got the idea. If I have increased your knowledge in any ways, please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified for the upcoming videos. I will see you in the next lecture. Take care.